Hi there. I'm Corey Turner, Senior Director of Healthcare Strategy. Welcome to another Texas In Conversation. In this interview, we'll be speaking with Keith Hoffman, Director of U.S. Sales at Terso Solutions, to discuss RFID inventory management. The evolution of technology is inevitable, with new solutions being developed every year. The hesitation of shifting from a manual system to an automated one is high among some hospitals and healthcare systems, but it's an approach that has more pros than cons. Today, we'll be examining the benefits that new technologies can bring to organizations from streamlined inventory management to giving back time to patient care. So thanks for joining me today, Keith. Um, before we dive into our conversation about RFID inventory management, please take a moment and introduce yourself and just tell us a little bit about your background. Sure. Thanks, Corey. So as you mentioned, Keith Hoffman, I'm the director of U.S. sales for Terso. Uh, I've been here about 11 years now, a variety of different roles, and have worked a lot in uh, healthcare, both at the hospital setting, the ASC setting, and even with med device companies on using RFID to automate a lot of their processes. So happy to be joining you and uh, look forward to the conversation. Great. So let's, you know, we'll kind of jump right in. Um, so hospitals and healthcare organizations that have not um, introduced hardware technologies into their clinical settings are likely uh, overspending and overstocking their shelves with inventory. Can you talk a little bit about Terso's product offering and then describe some of the hardware technology benefits involved when we talk about RFID solutions? Sure, yeah. The, so just quickly on RFID solutions, what they are, how they work. So the key there is it really all starts with an RFID label, right? And so there's a lot of different forms an RFID label can take. Typically, uh, we have a, a sticky label that has human readable numbers on the front and there's actually a chip and antenna integrated directly into that label and it's applied to the packaging. That tag is unique. So that's a unique identifier that's attached to those products. So every item can be tracked through that automation. So that's really the starting point is getting that RFID label affixed to a product. Um, and then the next step in that is mirroring that up with the actual metadata of the product. So that RFID tag number, number is unique, but it needs to match up with what that product description is, its lot number, its expiration date, and all that metadata that rides with it so that you know exactly what that product is when you see it in an RFID scan. So that's kind of the upfront of, of the anatomy of an RFID label, uh, a little bit about how our RFID labels are, are the key part. Um, on the back side of that then is technology like ours. So we've integrated RFID into cabinets, refrigerators, freezers, and that's freezers down to minus ADC, which we see a lot in tissue and biologics in hospitals. Uh, but it also includes things like what we call RFID read points, which can, can be ceiling mounted, they can be mounted in doorways to enable some reading that way. And so the way those work, uh, in our case, this is passive RFID technology. So uh, those readers turn on when an, um, an RFID tag is in the field, the RFID tag turns on, powered by that antenna. It communicates its information to that RFID reader and the RFID reader sends back that product information to the platform. And in this case, that platform is the Texas platform. Uh, so that's where all the data can be integrated into those clinical systems that a hospital might be using. That's great. Um, so you mentioned um, tissue tracking and cold storage and you know, there's a, there's a lot of technology that plays a big role in that. Um, can you talk a little bit about the variables, some of the variables that be sh should be considered when you're talking about tracking and managing that piece of, you know, that chain of custody for that kind of, those kind of products? Sure, and that's a big, big topic of conversation we hear often with, with hospital and ASC customers as well. Right. So we know with JACO standards and, and the FDA watching that there's quite a lot that goes in the chain of custody tracking for cold chain products. And often you see that with the binder, right? So they have the big binder they carry around. They need to track temperature on a periodic basis, but they also need to write down every time they've touched a piece of tissue uh, as it moves through the cold chain. So from freezer, back in, back out that all needs to be documented. And in a lot of cases today, that's a very manual process. They're either writing that in the logbook manually, 
they're scanning a barcode, they're still having to do manual inputs on top of that. Extremely time consuming, right? So oh, yeah. people are spending all their time doing that documentation and not their actual job, which is patient care in most cases, right? Um, so that's one consideration is can you move away from very manual processes like that? And that's where RFID can really help you specific in the cold chain with allowing that to be completely automated. So in that example, if you had an RFID freezer with tissue and biologics in it, uh, you can present an access pass to identify yourself to that device. You remove the RFID tag product, you close the door and you walk away. The system does all the rest of the work. So it will track the temperature and report it. It knows who opened that freezer or refrigerator because they swiped their access pass. And it has all the transaction details of what was taken. So you know exactly what products were taken, when they were taken. So it's a complete transaction level tracking. And again, the binder goes away. You don't need that logbook. You don't need to write down temperature and chain of custody. It's all automated through the system, which is a huge time saver in a lot of those instances. Right, and it seems like with that level of automation, it, it kind of, you know, there's always room for errors and there's always room for that in, 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 in anything we do, I think. But, you know, that really decreases that error rate exponentially. It has, to, you know, it just about has to, right? It really does. And so those, Anytime humans are involved, error is introduced, right? And a lot of times it's not even, there's nothing intentional about it, right? You're, you're going about trying to do your job. You're trying to be quick and effective. Things get missed. That's, that's the way humans work. And so uh, by taking that burden off of them, most of that can be eliminated. So those, the errors of things that were missed, not writing down what you took, um, expiration date management, which often is a very manual process of trying to pick through boxes and find the one to use first, that's time consuming, right? And so all of that can go away because the system can automate that and report it to you and just make it easier for you to do your job and not spend all your time digging through inventory. So another key point there too, I'd make on, on temperature control and temperature tracking. So that often um, is a hot topic of conversation for facilities as well. So systems like ours can be a little proactive on that monitoring as well. So we can report out temperature, but we also see things that are what we would call a temperature excursion. So if you start to warm up a freezer, there's steps we can take to notify you that, hey, something's going on with that compressor or the door was left open or something's happening there and you need to go do something about it before all that inventory uh, spoils. Yeah. So proactively taking that those measures to prevent you know a huge loss of inventory that's you know very expensive absolutely yep yeah one of the things you mentioned earlier also is the rfid labeling and i know that's you know over the years you know i've been doing this a long time over the years that's you know that's kind of been some object of uh debate and discussion on how to do that and is it worth it you know a lot of, there's a lot of things out there about that Tell me a little bit about that, um, you know, how can that help organizations really, you know, increase their cost savings and in inventory, you know, when we're talking about visibility in real time, uh, anything that you can, you know, elaborate on specifically, because, you know, that's one of those things to where people, when they say, well, we got to, we have to label our items, we have to label our items. Well, there's, there's, there's a process involved, there's procedures involved. Share with us a little bit how, how that can really be beneficial, you know, even with, even with the processes that you have to put in place, how beneficial that can be. Right. And so you're right on the money. You do have to put an RFID label on these products mm -hmm. and that, that is a process that somebody has to physically touch those boxes to do it. But the payoff comes on the other side of that, right? So, you know, we always talk about it in terms of think about the amount of time you're spending just on manual inventory tasks, right? Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, we have examples of that, which we'll, we'll talk about later. But if you're if you have three people who are spending a good majority of their day, that's a huge hourly rate. You're paying those people to do something that's not their job. Right. So they're spending all of their time doing that, which takes them away from what you actually want them to be doing and what they're very, very good at, which is patient care, you know, helping a hospital run efficiently, those kind of things. So. There's a lot of value in that on the other side of that, that RFID tag. In addition to that, if you think about the lack of visibility that exists today uh, across the healthcare supply chain, 
in a lot of instances, the hospital and ASC, they don't know exactly what they have. So the default is always let's buy as much as we can to make sure we don't run out because the worst case scenario is you have a patient on the table and you don't have the product, right? And that's not a situation you want to be in. So in a lot of cases, you're overstocking, you're overspending to make sure that stock room is stuffed full of product so it's always there. On the flip side, with an automated system, an RFID system like like we offer, you know what's there. So that automated visibility, you have full cycle counts automatically happening all the time. You always know what's in stock and you can get into things like uh, what's the minimum amount I should carry at any given time, right? You can start getting into some really interesting business intelligence data that can help you make better purchasing decisions. And by the way, save a lot of money. You don't need millions of dollars worth of product on the shelf. If you know exactly what you you have, how often it's used, you can buy what you need and you don't have to do that overstock. And that's that's a huge, huge place where we see savings with a lot of hospital customers. Yeah, that's exactly right. One thing we don't want to do is overspend on our inventory. Um, you know, Terso is, is a leader in this automation of this hardware um, that you guys are putting out there and, and, and it's, you know, have a fabulous product. Can you, can you share any kind of um, past results from imp implementing a RFID technology system? Um, you know, we'd love to hear some success stories. We'd love to hear some, some good details. Absolutely. So we have a lot of examples of this. I'll give you uh, two fairly local uh, to Terso headquarters examples. So there's a hospital down the road from us that was uh, really experiencing a couple major issues. One, lack of visibility like we talked about. Two, um, a very heavy reliance on people to do the work, which again, it goes back to labor and what are you spending your time on? They had three full-time equivalents that did nothing but try to figure out what inventory they had, where it was, what they needed to order. That's a huge uh, amount of expense that you're, you're paying people, yeah. again, to do things that aren't their job. And lastly, we've, we saw they were writing off a lot of material that either expired or was gone. They don't know what happened to it. It got used somewhere, it didn't get documented. So it gets back to that, that um, you know, error rates in manual process, right? So through that, they were able to basically eliminate um, the three full-time equivalents. They took and actually put them on strategic initiatives that could help the hospital with patient care and other things. They were able to take that down to half time of one person that was really focused on that inventory because we were able to automate the majority of that inventory tracking with them. So repurposing those people to do very, very valuable things for the organization and really eliminating all of that manual time they were spending, which was huge. Um, wow. So that, that was big. The other, the other big piece they saw was on the compliance side. And so specific with like tissue and implant tracking, um, we talked about chain of custody before and the logbook and the binder and all of those things. When they actually got audited, uh, Joint Commission came in, they saw the RFID units and basically told them, this is a huge relief for us. Now that we know, you know you're using a system like this, we know you're compliant. We still gotta look at the records, but we feel really good about it, right? We know you're gonna be compliant oh, yeah, yeah. because you're doing automated processes like this that do it for you. So for them, that was a huge sigh of relief because you know how that hand wringing, that nervousness goes when you know, <laughs> when you know they're coming to visit you. Um, yeah. Just that peace of mind of knowing I got this thing, it's working for me the way it should, and, and they're basically telling you, great job, right? That's where you want yeah. to be. Yeah, nobody wants to. Nobody wants Jayco to come, and when they come, it's nervous. You know, it's, it's yep. kind of a nervous, anxious time. So hearing that, you know, it just kind of, it kind of alleviates that pressure from, from the clinical staff. And one of the things we like to talk about is, you know, our solutions partnered with your solutions. You know, we, we really give back, uh, patient care time to the clinicians. We don't, we don't want to, we don't want to have clinicians doing supply chain work. They should be doing clinical work. So, you know, partnering together with a company, um, like Terso is, is a, is a huge win for us. So, you know, what do you believe are, are kind of the strengths of a collaboration between, you know, a technology partner such as, such as us, us as Texas and a hardware partner like you guys is at Terso, you know, you know, we love our partnership. So give us kind of some strengths of that collaboration. 
Yeah, I think it boils down to really two key things. We're Terso is really good at RFID, RFID and cold chain, and how the RFID processes should work. So we can really help look at your current process today, your manual process, your barcode scanning, and give you the tools to automate that, improve it, make it better so you can get those efficiencies. So it's really all about automation, leveraging a technology like, like RFID to be able to do that. On the other side of that, Texas really has the clinical expertise, right? So Texas is in every day dealing with healthcare supply chain, clinical workflows, all the things that matter for patient care. And so when you put those two things together, that's pretty powerful, right? So you've got the patient care, the clinical expertise combined with all of that automation knowledge, that workflow right sizing that somebody like Terso can give you. And when you put them together, huge benefits uh, to that. And really, you kind of get the best of both worlds, right? So you, you kind of got best in class supply chain solutions with best in class automation and RFID. Uh, so pretty powerful combina combination there. So lastly, I would love for you to give um, so our audience of, of supply chain leaders out there Kind of, kind of some starting points when they're talking about an RFID project and they have this, you know, they have these ideas in their head. Kind of give them some, some good places to start their process of, you know, evaluating partners, looking at what hardware is right for them. Where do they start? Yeah, I think there's a couple key things to really look at, and one is where are you really experiencing the most pain, right? So you can look across your organization and start to look at your workflows and how you do things. And in most cases, people know, right, <laughs> where that pain is and what they're seeing. They get that feedback on a daily basis. They usually can spout it off rather quickly. Absolutely. Um, but the other part of that is where can you get uh, really quick kind of uh, demonstrations of how a solution like this can work. And often we see things like tissue and biologics where mm. we know it's highly regulated, high value products, right? And so the ROI is very, very clear and very, very fast. So by doing it in a place like that, you can really demonstrate the success of a program, which leads to further rollouts kind of across the board. So again, identifying those key pain points, trying to find the quick win, where can you implement this to have the biggest impact right off the bat? Those are probably two of the key pieces. But I would also encourage people to look at um, the resources that are available from people like Texas and Terso we're constantly putting data out there about how other people are using systems like this. And so spend time really reading through that stuff. There's plenty of studies and plenty of information we can share about how people are using this kind of technology, how it works. If you wanna get back to basics, it's really how it works and how it could apply to your solution, your workflow, right? And so there's plenty of that data out there that, that can be shared to kind of give you the, the starting point. No, that's great, Keith. Thank you so much for that. And, you know, Keith, I, I really appreciate you um, coming on with us to this end conversation uh, here and just sharing your RFID knowledge with us. You know, it's been really insightful. And, you know, uh, again, we just thank you so much for the time. Thank you. Appreciate it. It's been fun. Yeah. So, and thank you to our viewers. Uh, if you need support with integrating a technology solution within your healthcare organization, Texas is here to help, along with Terso. At the end of this video, you have the option to speak to one of our healthcare supply chain experts, or you can also access Keith's blog post on debunking four myths about RFID inventory management. Thanks again for joining us, and I'll see you next time.